this being the last show of season two, rather than have you wait till next season to see the finished project, we decided to bring you the final two segments of Mark and Don Polk's Yellowstone Vintage Trailer Restoration Project. And what a beauty it is. Rolling on TV is sponsored by Carefree of Colorado, celebrating over 45 years of RV awning innovation. Closed captioning, where available, is sponsored by Forest River. Begin the journey. Welcome back to our 67 Yellowstone Trailer Restoration Project. We have a lot to do today. First, we're going to finish installing the bathroom. Then we'll finish connecting the 120 volt and 12 volt wiring to the new power distribution center. After that's done, we'll tackle installing a new rubber roof on the trailer and get it prepped to install some appliances. There's no time to waste, so let's get started. We were trying to figure out how to uh, do the shower walls. We went to Lowe's and actually found a tub surround that had a little bit of damage to it and it was marked down to like $15 and we had to cut that section off anyway so we've got a really nice uh, surround with some built-in corners that's going to work really well for the shower. Okay, we're getting ready to make our water connection at the toilet and all we have to do is put an elbow on the uh, water line coming in and then we're going to put a piece connected to the elbow going up to our water connector on the back of the toilet. So, got everything cut. Okay, that should work. Get that down inside our elbow. And that's all there is to it. I have to snug those fittings up, but it's ready for water. What we thought we would do uh, to add a little custom touch is put a, a couple rows of these small tiles, ceramic tiles, at the top of the shower enclosure and then above the tiles, finish it off with our vinyl flashing. Okay, we've got our uh, vinyl flashing installed above the shower enclosure and now we're getting ready to put a row of tile, ceramic tile in here just to give it a nice accent look. I'm just going to scuff it up with a piece of sandpaper so when I put my adhesive for the tile, it'll actually have something to grab a hold of. Okay, we decided to take our customization one step further here and we're going to use two sheets of our ceramic tile and use it as a backsplash behind our range top burners. You can see our circuit breakers for the 120 volt side of the power center. And then this is where our 12 volt fuses are going to be located. And then we're going to make our connections at each breaker, our main breaker and then our branch circuits. And then for the 12 volt side, the power center's already got the wiring at the back so I can make connections using wire nuts. And then I just have to run my ground wire for the 12 volt items through and ground them on this bus bar. Aquacam Tossins, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. 
whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. Be sure to visit our website and learn all about our new Inside Access programs where you can interact and ask questions about the people, companies, and products featured on these shows. Find out all about Inside Access programs at RollingOnTV.com. One secret to a long-lasting rubber roof is prepping the surface properly before you install it. When all of the new Dicor roofing supplies arrived, it was time to install the new rubber roof on the project trailer. Here's how we did it. Make sure all of the roof seams are as tight and as level as possible. All of the screw heads need to be level or slightly below the surface of the roof decking. If any of the seams are wider than 1 16th of an inch, you can apply seam tape to cover the seams and the screw heads. To avoid any sharp edges from damaging the roofing membrane, you can either bevel the edge of the roof decking using a sander or you can use fleece tape over the edges. Next, sweep and or blow compressed air over the entire roof prior to starting on the installation. After you measure the roof, cut the roofing membrane to fit. Be sure and allow some excess on the ends and the sides that can be trimmed later. Lay the roofing membrane over the roof and make sure the excess is evenly spaced at the front and rear and side to side. Fold the membrane in half exposing the roof decking on one half. Apply the adhesive using a roller attached to a handle. Carefully roll both ends of the membrane over the adhesive trying to avoid any wrinkles. Now fold the other side back and repeat the process. Finish by sweeping out any air bubbles in the roofing membrane starting in the middle of the roof and working towards the sides. Installing a roof air conditioner is not difficult. You need to make sure and follow all the electrical codes and read all the installation instructions prior to installing the AC unit. With this air conditioner, we have enough cooling power to turn the old trailer into an igloo if we want to. After the new roof was installed, we installed the new air conditioner, the power roof vents, vent covers, the tank vent caps, and the new motorized TV antenna. Then we moved to the interior of the trailer and we installed our overhead lights, wired the 12 volt roof vents, and installed the stereo system. Two of our three major systems in the restoration are almost completed, the water system and the electrical system. That leaves us with the LP gas system. Before we can install the LP gas appliances, the cylinders, and the regulator, we need to run our LP gas lines. To do that, we ran copper tubing from the front of the trailer and branched off to our four LP gas appliances, the range and oven, the furnace, the refrigerator, and the water heater. The trailer frame already had some holes through the cross members that we routed the copper through and we used rubber grommets to protect the gas lines from damage. Wherever a fitting is required, we used a flaring tool to make our connections. Here's how we did it. Whenever you flare tubing for an LP gas line, it's extremely important that you do it properly to create a good seal. When you cut the copper tubing, you want a nice straight cut. Then you want to ream the cut piece of tubing to remove any burrs or sharp edges. The flare needs to be smooth and free of any edges for it to seal properly. And you always want to remember to put the fitting on before you flare the tubing. Before we could install the three-way refrigerator and the microwave, I needed to frame the cabinet where they would be installed. When you install a refrigerator, it's important that the cabinet has zero tolerances on the sides, top, and bottom. The only place you want heat to go is behind it, so the heat rises up and goes out of the top vent. If you leave an air pocket somewhere that the heat can get to and just sit there, it affects the efficiency of the refrigerator. Here's how we did it. Right. 
We tested all of the 12 volt and 120 volt circuits to make sure everything worked properly and it was time to install the new tankless water heater. But to do that I needed to install some of the lower exterior metal where the water heater would be mounted. My original plan was to try to reuse the original exterior metal but when I purchased all of those parts from the RV dealer who was going out of business, there were several rolls of new metal included. So that's what we used. Okay, we have our water heater switch wired. We're gonna, I hooked the battery up. We're gonna check it for power. There we go. So our water heater installation is complete. I can almost see light at the end of the tunnel. Join us next time when we finish installing the exterior metal Paint the trailer, install a new 3,500 pound axle with disc brakes, and finish the Yellowstone Trailer Restoration Project. From off the road adventure camping to luxurious full time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit forestriverinc.com Forest River, begin the journey. At Norcole, we realize that some of your favorite RV destinations are off the grid. And Norcole refrigerators are uniquely designed with that RV experience in mind. We call it Freedom Unplugged. To learn more about our Norco RV refrigerator line or to find a dealer near you, visit our website at norco.com. Join Rolling On TV in supporting care camps to ensure that children with cancer can experience the healing power of camping at these special oncology camps. If you've never heard of care camps, Now's the time to visit our website and learn all about this great organization and the work they do for these deserving children. Also, stay tuned and see how you can win a specially customized 2021 Forest River Nobo travel trailer with the proceeds going directly to Care Camps. To learn all about Care Camps and how you can win this Super Nobo, visit RollingOnTV.com. Welcome back to the Vintage Trailer Restoration Project Finale. We still have lots to do on the 67 Yellowstone, so let's start right now. The first thing we did was connect our city water and fresh water fill to the plumbing system and tested the water system for leaks. Okay, the first we're going to go ahead and turn our water pump on, let it pressurize the entire system. I'm going to check underneath here for any leaks, then we'll go to each faucet make sure that we don't have any leaks and everything's working properly. Followed by testing it with city water pressure. Okay, uh, been through the whole system again with the city water hooked up. Don't see any leaks at all. Everything seems to check out. So I think we're good to go. What we'll probably do is run some water into the holding tanks, uh, put a little bit of weight on those, and then we'll, we'll check around the valves, make sure there's no leaks there. And then I think we can just go ahead and move on to uh, finishing the LP gas system and putting the metal on. get these corners shaped we have to cut little tabs so we can actually bend this over and we want to get a nice straight edge here nice smooth edge so when you're looking at it from the side you won't see any kinks or anything so we cut these tabs push it over put a staple in and as you can see we have some butyl tape here which is going to seal 
this overlap and then we'll put another row of butyl tape on before we put our molding on. After the exterior metal was completed, we installed the windows, a rear backup camera, stabilizer jack, an LP gas and CO leak detector, an electric tongue jack, and a 12 volt LED television. Now we can go ahead and mount our cylinder racks, our regulator, and test the LP gas system. We've got our LP gas cylinders turned on, and I'm just going to hook my manometer up to one of the burners. I'm going to open it, and you can see we've got perfect reading of 11 inches water column. The big day finally arrived when the project trailer was sanded down, masked off, and painted. Wow, am I glad I used AquaCam. Maybe chili wasn't the best idea. AquaCam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. I know, you can't wait to get back out and enjoy some RV. Well, how about on your next trip, you take a brand new GoPower portable solar power system with you? You can. Together with our partners at GoPower, we're giving away a portable Go Power system that includes a 130 watt portable solar panel, inverter, extension cords, and more. The contest starts April 5th, and to enter, just visit our website at rollingontv.com and click on the contest link. I was a little concerned about using the old axle and brakes on the trailer and I thought it would be a good idea to upgrade to a new 3,500 pound Dexter axle. Then I thought if we're going to install a new axle, why don't we go all the way and install disc brakes too? Of course that would require an electric over hydraulic actuator to operate the brakes. It's a good thing I have some friends in the industry who help me out. So our vintage trailer project got a set of disc brakes from Kodiak an actuator from Tucson Brakes, and a brand new set of tires. Here's how the installation went. We've got our axle off, and I'm going to show you what the culprit is here. If you'll notice on the old axle, we've only got a three-quarter inch diameter spindle, whereas our new axle, I believe it's a one and one-sixteenth inch diameter on the spindle. And then you also notice the new axle tube is much bigger in diameter than the old axle and combined that's going to give us our 3500 pound rating on our new axle. So we've got the old one off, we're going to take a real close look at our springs and make sure there's absolutely no problems with the leaf springs and then we're going to go ahead and install our new axle.
in hindsight, I'm not sure if I would tackle a project this big again, but now that it's over, I wouldn't change a thing. It gave me the opportunity to work on a project with Tyler, which was great. He did a wonderful job seeing it through to the end. Hope you enjoyed this week's show. For more information on anything you've seen on the program, along with additional videos, stories, and news, plus some great contests, visit our website at rollingontv.com. And remember, you can also watch Rolling On TV on Roku, Amazon Fire, Vimeo, and YouTube, as well as on any of our station's streaming media services. For complete coverage information, click on the Where to Watch link on our website. As usual, this has been another fun production. Tyler, if you measure and cut a piece wrong, it's coming out of your allowance. No. Yeah. No. Tyler. Hey, Tyler, where are you? Hey Dad, can I have some help changing the sandpaper on the sander? Wake up! What? Anybody out there want to buy a good vintage trailer, just email Mark at rveducation101.com. I've got a good deal for you. <laughs> Tyler! Is he in a motorhome? Tyler! It's a dirty job, but someone has to do it. <laughs>